Welcome to the Good Rookie Show. My name is Fahim. And my name is Nelly J, y'all. And we are Good Rookies. That's right. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? Happy Good Tuesday. And guess what? It's the Good Rookie Show. Yep, yep. Yep, yep. What's going on, everybody? As you know, we're your host coming to you from Toronto, Canada, the 6th. And we always bring you the hottest topics in sports and culture. And Fahim, I'm going to do a quick rapid speed question because a lot happened in the last week and I have to get your thoughts. Number mm-hmm. one, big, big news. LeBron James, after Team USA losing to Team Canada, big up on ourselves. Wow. The man wants to come back. Steph apparently is interested. Fahim, what do you think USA, uh, like for Le- LeBron to want to come back? to play your thoughts on that first of all yeah um not ex- not really surprised um <laughs> us has been in a situation before when they had to have the redeem team come before um i i think it's all you know there's not all in fair play really like there's nothing out of bounds with this you can other other teams could do it even for canada we were expecting jamal murray to pop, pop, play in paris and others come along so um it's just the u.s has a much deeper bag to go into in regards to uh people but um uh the avengers <laughs> yeah. i i mean it's interesting because uh again the issue wasn't their offense the issue was their defense so i'm curious lebron can listen um I, listen there's, there's two way usa wins right shooting better than everyone just out shoot everyone or playing some good defense that's basketball because it's a possession game you have to maximize your offensive possessions and stop the other team so i mean I'm curious to see, at the end of the day, LeBron can come back. He's not the same LeBron. So there need someone, I love, love LeBron, but he ain't the same guy he was back in the day. So he's going to have to get some help. That's why we saw them losing to people like Denver, who he might have to see in, in FIBA, or Jamal Murray, who he may have to see in FIBA. Both of these guys are very talented players. So at the end of the day, I'm curious to see, like you said, what happens. But I mean, I think LeBron's going to play for him because the man can barely play 50 games in the NBA. Barely do that. So okay. what? So like y'all gonna load manage up until FIBA? Like I, I'm confused, bro. But anyway, good uh, luck. <laughs> so uh, with Team USA though, it's the thing is he's so he's the biggest domino piece, right? Yeah. So when LeBron plays, remember if we're talking LeBron, we're talking Olympics, Paris. Yes. I mean, everyone, every NBA player who is American is gonna want to be on this. Squad. Agreed. Agreed. So, yeah. I mean, they, I agree. I'd be surprised. Actually, I'll say this. I'd be surprised outside of maybe Anthony Edwards. Is there anyone else that you think after will actually make that? I mean, that's a good question. No, no. The only quick? person on that team that should come back is Anthony Edwards. Right. That's it. Everyone else, okay. no. <laughs> maybe Macau for the defensive, the wing defense. That's mm-hmm. it. But everyone else, no. Actually, Walker Kessler didn't play bad, but he didn't get to play. Like Steve Kerr did not. Because Steve Kerr had no clue how to play big man ball. Yeah, and, and but, the world's played big man ball. Right. So okay. how about we r- remove Steve Kerr? How about that? How about we do a coaching change? And like you said, bring back Anthony Edwards. I'm okay with Macau, but honestly, to your point, I don't think anyone should come back. We should bring mm-hmm. like in a whole new team, to be honest. Yeah. But I do like yeah. AE. But Anthony Edwards ha- needs the ball in his hand to be impactful. We, if he's playing with the big dog, the ball will not be in his hand. He'll be off the bench. So right. it, it was okay with that. That's yeah. the question. Yeah, well, I, I, I definitely think a LeBron-led team is a, a meddling team. Agreed. You know? Oh, agreed. No, if so, LeBron's yeah. there, Kevin Durant's going to be there. Um, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So, yes, yeah. I think his name is going to draw other players to come yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm just saying LeBron alone is not enough with that current 100%. roster. They need yeah. others to come in and just help them be more dominant because the okay. USA just wins by dom- dominating the, the offense, just mm-hmm. like really possessions, right? But you got to rebound. They had Javel McGee in the Olympics last time for a reason, right? So they got, they got to get their big men. So either I think 80 might play. So, you know, that's cool. Okay. Next quick question for you, Fahim. Um, in, in regards to um, the week one of uh, NFL, right? We saw a lot of teams. We saw a lot of guys get paid, Fahim. And I'm going to list you all the guys who got paid this past summer. Okay. Burrows, highest paid. Second is Hertz. Lamar Jackson, Jones. Those four salaries, okay. Sorry, Daniel Jones, for those who don't know. 
Those four stops for him combined for 950 million. Wow. Guess how many touch touchdowns they had combined for week one? Uh, you just listed four QBs, right? Yeah. Four or five. Four Joe Burrows, Lamar yeah. Jackson, yeah. Jalen Hurts, Daniel Jones. Their combined salary is 950 mil. Fahim, and, how many you how many com, how many combined TDs do you think they had week one? I'm gonna go with three. One. Wow. So we spoke about this last week, y'all. They about to perform. Week two is coming up. So when this comes out, it'll be week two. But mm -hmm. week one has not been the best for a lot of the top paid quarterbacks. Um, oh. and actually a lot of the the like the rookie, like younger quarterbacks. The ones who weren't really on people's radars played really well. So, yeah, let's see what happens week two, guys. But anyway, I want to bring that up. I, mm -hmm. I saw that I saw that post by um, they got to Sports Center, and I was like, oh, tough week. <laughs> let's see if they can turn it around. It's really early yeah. though. It's football. It's really early. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oxy, uh, prayers up for Aaron Rodgers. You know, especially yes. uh, Aaron Rodgers' injury happened. Uh, I guess first game, first drive of his first game. Um, Aaron Rodgers is, he's older, so you, I guess he, he's got the talent, but I don't know if he can really afford to just sit out a year, you know what I'm saying? Like, every year seems to be, that window is kind of closing. Yeah. Um, but what do you think? Do you think uh, next next year he'll be back, or what, what's your thought? No, he says, he, he got, his surgery is done, he's doing well, I took a picture okay. today, so he's doing well, great surgery, successful, Um, he wants to come back. I mean, if you know Aaron Rodgers, he's a competitor. Mm -hmm. He's a competitor. So um, unless the Jets bench him, he's not. I mean, Fahim, they paid too much money for this guy, right? They're not going to not try to get something out of it. So, and he's still a very attractive piece where players are going to want to come to the New York Jets to play. He's going to help them sell tickets. You know what I mean? So gotcha. like monetary, like money-wise, whatever, like I think they're going to play. Now, is he going to be successful next year? I, I, man. That kind of injury it takes a while to, to heal. So we gotta right. see to your point, he's not he's not he's not a young ting anymore. You know what I'm saying? So we gotta see how he heals and how rehab goes. It's mad early, but like you said, I wish him all the best. I do hope he does get better and I hope he can come back and compete. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? It's all you can ask for. It sucks for him to right. end his career like that. You know what I'm saying? So I mean, we saw Peyton Manning get traded, had the neck remember the neck injury, had surgeries, came back and won. So, you know. We got to see what happens here. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Aaron can write his own story and write a redemption story. So, and that team is mad good. They they won without him. So right. clearly he has a really good, uh, really good team surrounding him. So if mm -hmm. I'm Aaron, I, I, I'm actually pretty positive knowing that my team won without me. Without the Green Bay right. Packers, they weren't going to win. <laughs> like, <laughs> that team wasn't good enough, respectfully. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, so the NBA Board of Governors, They've just approved a stricter resting policy, something that's been on probably for like the last maybe uh, even before Kawhi's load management. It's always been a thing in regards to resting, right? So this approved mm -hmm. that they have uh, stricter rules that's going to punish teams uh, for that sit uh, players for a national televised game, an in-season tournament, a game. Or rest multiple all stars at one time. So for those three scenarios, there will be some kind of punishment if you do break those. Uh, I'll repeat them again: national television, so a nationally televised game, in season tournament game, and also resting multiple all stars at once. Nelly J. Man, Fahim, it, it was bound to happen. Okay, like they literally they have abused the. Load managing. I listen. I get it, guys. We get it. Other teams have, have done it before. The Spurs started it. Uh, Toronto had to do it because, man, he guys, he was out for a whole year. We're gonna gonna make the man come back and play every game. It was a necessity. Fahim, yeah, load management is a necessity. <laughs> but for some reason, it became a luxury. You know what I'm saying? Right. And it was abused because you're a broadcaster, you're ESPN, you're at TNT, you're paying all this money. For these guys to get paid, but for them to perform on those big nights where you're getting obviously advertisers, right? People are paying to put their ads in these games and the stars aren't showing up. They're taking a rest. One of the games for him that I'll never forget was when Emil Fahim, we know that big men don't last. Embiid and Jokic, right? 
Embiid and Jokic played twice a year. You're telling me Embiid. I'm sorry, you couldn't play that one game in Denver? You know what I'm saying? You are the face of your of your franchise. People are paying money to watch you and Jokic, the two top centers in the league, go back and forth, and you're resting. Why? Because it's a back-to-back. Nah, Fahim, I'm about that. So at the end of the day, I agree. Like, there got to be penalties behind this. Um, enough is enough. I like that they're adding, like, the, the um, if you want to win any type of end-of-the-season end award, you have to have 65 games. Should be 70, but 65 is okay. And now they're adding this. This is now <laughs> saying... Okay, y'all are getting paid now. You're getting enough money. Play basketball. I get you want to win a championship, but guess what? All the greats before y'all played all these games for him and and, and, and they still won championships. Why can't y'all? And for him, I think the extra resting could be causing injuries as well. They talk about how like if your body's really active, it actually helps your body to perform better overall. But if you're resting every other time, it actually weakens your body, right? So at the end of the day, Fahim, you're load managing, but Fahim, we've seen the most injuries since, you know, the last four or five years. Yeah, it could have been COVID. It could have been, you know, the short season, whatever. But I just think that, first of all, they're not doing basketball runs anymore in practice. They're shooting around and they're not playing enough basketball in games because they're, you know, they're resting back to back. Pascal does not, Fahim, people want to call Trey and Pascal overrated Fahim, but guess what? Those guys play lots of basketball games and you rarely see Trey or Pascal resting. Okay, so how are they overrated when they're the ones who actually perform and go out on the court every freaking night? You know what I'm saying? So to me, if you want to be a star, play games, period. You know what I'm saying? That's why I love Kawhi, I love PG, uh, Paul George. But guess what? If y'all don't play, y'all in top 10. Right? Y'all... And Fahim, I'm curious to see like what their checks are too after this fact. Because I think... A lot of the guys in the last two All NBA Fahims were not playing a lot of games. They were under sixty games. So this rule was a necessity. It had to be done. Coaches, GNs, players were abusing it too much. So I'm very happy the governors voted this in. And now Fahim, I'm curious to see how what happens next year. Right? What happens next year? Mm -hmm. You just mentioned about being very happy. Um, I'm happy about something else. I've been we we both been watching basketball for decades, like forever. Um, this is the first time that I've actually, uh, people talk about superstars and stars, and there's never really been a set criteria to what the league considers a star. Uh, this seems to be the first time that something's outlined of something that the league has said, this is what defines a star. Um, so now I guess officially due to this rule, since they're saying that you can only rest multiple all-stars at once, mm -hmm. um, they define a star as a player who has made an all star or NBA. Oh, sorry, let me put it again. A player who's made an all star or all NBA team in the past three seasons. So, I guess going forward, if anybody has made an all NBA team or an all star in the past three seasons prior, they're a star. So it's not necessarily what they've done now, but I guess they've taken it over the three-year period, which I think, I mean, that's fair. I have no problem with that that uh, that criteria, but at least for now we have something concrete that we can say, this is what the NBA sees as a star. Interesting. Yeah, no, and I think that's fair because, you know, they're saying a star, right? A star yeah. means for him. We've seen the NBA broadcasting, the national, you know, like the list, what teams, what games are going to be showing. All those teams have, like superstars or stars that fans enjoy, right? Or the NBA deems as stars, right? As a broadcaster or, or the channel, or whatever, I'm paying y'all millions of dollars for him to to, uh, to get exclusive rights to show that game on my um, on my channel. Are you going to tell me that you're starting this rest because they're tired? They had a back to back, nah, star. I think you know the governor saw their pocket. You know what? We can't afford to lose this money, right? We can't afford to lose it, and. I think it's the right play. But to your point, it is the first time to define a star. Um, I think an all, anything a, NBA All-Star is a star and the All-NBA player is a star. That to me is correct, right? Superstars are a different realm. But I think if you're an all, if you're NBA All-Star, if you're an All-NBA player, yeah, all-defensive player, maybe not all-defensive players. I don't think every all-defensive players are stars to me. But I do think all NBA players are stars. If you're in that team, you're a star of this league. You're a top 50 for sure. Yeah. Uh, and Fred Van Vliet, ironically, I never 
I would never consider him a star. Mm -hmm. But I guess he's a star. I guess till next year, he can. He has a star tag. He's been. He was an all star two years ago. So that makes him a star, which is interesting. I'm not mad at it. It's just not like it's good to see. I guess after next year, we can reevaluate that if he doesn't make it again. And then after three seasons, then you're no longer a star if you haven't done it. But that's interesting that they go back three years and and uh, and give that tag to anyone over the three years. So we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, Nelly J, let's go to For the Culture. For the Culture, we like to highlight individuals for the culture. And today, we'd like to highlight a really cool initiative. I am a fan of it. I think it's really dope. So I want to kind of bring bring some shine, some light on it, Fahim. Um, jo- Cole Anthony, he's a Orlando Magic guard, right? Comes off the bench, hungry. His dad played basketball too. So big up to Cole Anthony. Um, him and his mom launched a new youth sports app to really help parents and provide them some resources in helping their kids if this is their goal, to become an NBA professional basketball player. Um, this is something where, you know, his mom, just so you guys know, um, Crystal McCray McGuire, uh, she's actually um, a, she's actually a New York, a New York Times bestselling author, a filmmaker, media professional. Um, and she even had a documentary called Little Ballers for, for Nickelodeon that she directed as well, and that she created for, as well. So it's a youth focus for him. Sports app is called Game Up. And it's launching this month, September. And essentially, the whole goal, um, and big up to blackenterprise.com, as, as they quote it here, the whole goal of it is to help parents and their kids uh, embark on, on, on their sports development skills and helps youth sports evolve. So they're going to do the charge in helping families, give them support towards their goals. Because again, like if your kids want to want to pursue basketball or as that kind of sport, there are things you have to know. Right. And if you look up to to different resources out there, either you find the right, you know, group to network with and learn from them. But technology is is the future. Right. So having an app, I think that's going to host a range of, um, you know, um, giving them teams, database of programs. Right. Trainers. Right. Uh, Clients is going to give them a whole bunch of things. I think that'd be really great. So I think it's pretty cool. It's going to have some AI technology as well. But Fahim, I, I want to give give us some shout out because I think it's really great seeing basketball players really want to give back to the youth, but also want to give back to basketball. Right. My only pushback on this entire app is that that Fahim make it to the NBA is so tough. OK, <laughs> it's not for everybody. Not everyone can handle the NBA. And Fahim, we're seeing it now with people like Ben Simmons, mental health. It's not for everyone. But I do like the fact that you know, it's a goal. Why not shoot for it? And if not, at least you can get, you know, as parents, you can get resources available to you to help that. But I love the fact that he's combining technology, um, giving, you know, parents that type of, um, I guess, access to items and trainers and things that they probably wouldn't get access to. Right. Um, so I think it's really dope. And that's why I wanted to highlight Cole Anthony and his mom, um, McCray McGuire, uh, sorry, McCrary, my gosh, McCrary, McGuire, and highlight them for the culture. So, yeah, Fahim, what's your thoughts on this? Um, any feedback? You got it. So I do have a question. Is it just only for basketball or is it something that because it looks like they might be looking to roll this out to beyond basketball to other sports also? Yeah. So right now it's basketball only. Okay, um, but okay. I think, you know, I think right now, you know, listen, launching a new app. Fahim, you know how it is, right? In technology, you launch a new app. There's many things that can go wrong. Many things you have to change. So it's the first launch. The platform is going to have that AI tech in there. So this app will be focused on New York, by the way. It's not like a national okay. app. It's okay. focused on New York area only. Because remember, Fahim, basketball and trainers, every state has its, you know, has its own like thing, right? right. So it's going to be a New York only area. And it's going to give them like crowdsourcing information around youth programs, teams, um, gives them full list of trainers. It, the goal is to be like a one-stop shop solution, right? And so Crystal, McCary, McGuire, and Cole Anthony, you know, they want to give this out and launch it in that tri-state area, um, you know, in New York, right? Very so, smart. Yeah. And remember, New York is a very, man, they have two NBA teams, very populated, right? Mm-hmm. A lot of basketball out there. 
So I think it's a good market to start off with, right? Right, um, of course. Mm -hmm. And after New York, you can hit up uh next one will be Texas would be another one. Uh California would be another one. So um yeah, I mean great initiative and and it's for the youth. Um uh you know, kind of a, a way of investing in the youth's future. Yeah. Yep. And I'm seeing now, like you said, their first their in the first quarter of 2024, they want to expand to baseball and football next year. So that's the goal. But, you know, um, so that's the goal to expand it, but still be for, for, for the New York area, though. Mm -hmm. I think they probably want to focus on New York. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it makes sense. Right. Especially if you're comfortable in that market, like, you know, the market very well. Why not leverage that in New York? And then, of course, if that goes well in New York, you can copy paste and like you said, try right. other areas, but yeah, they're going to keep oh. it in New York area, tri-state and um, well, tri-state area, of course. And then of course, the, I think the tri-state area is uh, New York, New Jersey, and man, us Canadians. What's the tri-state <laughs> area in the States? Um, I'm going to go with New I, York, I think New it's... Jersey, and Philly because they're all kind of connected somewhere. I think it's Philly. Oh, I, I did my Google. Oh. So the tri-state area... Oh, Oh, hold up. Try to area. New York, New oh, Jersey, man. and. New York, New Jersey. Oh, Pennsylvania. Con oh, it's my bad. Yeah, New York, Connecticut, and New Jersey. That's a tri state area. Oh, New oh, hold on. New York, Connecticut. Connecticut, New and New Jersey. Connecticut. Oh, it's the other side, not the. Yeah. The yeah. Pennsylvania side. So, okay, New York, gotcha. Connecticut, okay, cool. and New Jersey. That's our geographical uh, <laughs> <laughs> quiz today. Tri state area. <laughs> No clue where that was, but yeah, those those three states. So that's pretty cool. And those three states have a, a big lot, a lot of basketball in those three states. So yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Shout out to Cole Anthony. Big up to y'all. Congrats. Mm -hmm. Big is great, and I think it gives parents easy access, right? I, I mean, for he, imagine you're a parent. You like basketball? What 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 do I do? Where do I go to get you guys to get you or figure out what to do in this in sense? Right? I can ask the coach. But what if I want to just go to an app, research people, and do it myself? Ooh, shoot. I, I got both options now. So. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yep. Nice. All right. So, Nelly J, let's go ahead and close this out with our last. That's absurd. That's absurd. So he wrote, what was absurd this week? What was absurd? Coach Jay Norvell coaches Colorado State. He's about to engage in a rivalry with University of Colorado's Coach Prime. And he had made a comment about Coach Prime's attire, to which uh, Coach Prime said he's going to take it personal. And... But hold up. Please tell the folks what he said, though. Okay. That's Because what's absurd is what he said. Not what Coach Prime said, but what he said is absurd. You got it. <laughs> All right. He said, quote, when I talk to grownups, I take my hat and my glasses off. That's what my mother taught me. <laughs> absurd. <laughs> absurd. Like, Fahim, I don't know about this, this college football you know, season, but people are calling it a storyline. It can't be because this is too good. Like if I'm an NCAA football person, I'm like, yes, talker. But in the day, Fahim, I think coaches are really upset with Dion, jealous. This guy's getting everyone at his games. He's getting celebrities. He's getting TV shows. I mean, but it's Dion. Like, it's prime time, baby. Like, why are we surprised? You know what I'm saying? I wasn't shocked. I I, I thought Dion can really take what he did in Jackson State and create because remember it's him he's the vibe he's the culture right and i didn't think that he would have any issues building a new program from scratch like he's magnetic but bro why do you care what a next man is wearing why is that your business how about you focus on the game you're playing <laughs> how about you focus on trying to beat them and not focus on oh I said my first of all his glasses on or off why does that bother you Sahim, it's so absurd it's so petty um, the video of Dion talking to his teammates and said he had to make it personal. Like, bro, <laughs> have you not noticed that you make it personal with these guys? They're going to come for you. So, Fahim, I cannot wait to watch this game. Now, when this comes out, Fahim, the game would have already occurred. But I think it's so absurd. As a coach, you're going to come at Dion and talk about, I take my hat and glasses off when I talk to grown ups. Like, shut your, shut, shut your, shut your. <laughs> 
<laughs> Go ahead, Fahim. <laughs> Winner or loss, uh, it's completely absurd what he's uh, what he said, especially now. We have to admit those. You said you're going to watch the game. I'll. It's going to be on my radar. We're talking about a rivalry of University of Colorado versus Colorado, Colorado State. State University. Mm -hmm. I don't think in the history of mankind has anyone outside of maybe Colorado care about this rivalry. But but this little comment here has got the fringe people who maybe aren't following as much. There's a story behind it. So um, it's absurd. But I'm also wondering if it could be a little bit of a, you know gamesmanship to actually hype up the game. You know, for instance, in boxing, you have two boxers, you have the weigh-in, you have the press conference, and you maybe talk a little trash, maybe push here and there to kind of build up for the fight. Um, this comment, uh, even though it's way off base, I wonder if it was kind of planned to hype up the hype up the game. What you got on the way out, Nelly J? Yeah. Um. I, I don't think it was, but no. even last week for him, game two, week two, th that other coach also came at Dion. So this is a trend. Like when I said they're jealous, coaches are jealous. Dion, for him, guess which team has, what, guess which team has the most, like whose uh, tickets are more valued right now in, in college football. The average ticket to watch Dion Sanders team play is $517. That's more than, than, than Ohio State. Like for him, wow. his team, mm -hmm. Fahim, this Dion has brought an entire, entire money line to mm -hmm. uh, to one school in Colorado, like mm -hmm. the right. Buffaloes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like they're for him. This guy brought so much money into this school, to this program. For him, after two games, two, for him, wow. they hurt. So yes, it's been a trend. Week two, coach spoke some crap. Week th three, coach talking some crap. All they're doing is putting. Wood in the fire. So Dion blaze the place. Blaze it down. Yes. Blaze it, please. Yep. I'll be watching theme. <laughs> and I've watched the last two weeks. I'm not miss a single game. Okay. Nice. A single game. And I don't even care about this team, but I'm watching. Hello. It's Dion Sanders. It's prime it's prime yeah. time. Right. I'm tuned in. Damn it. I'm tuned in. Nice. Nice. <laughs> nice. All right. Now EJ, let's put this episode in the books. Ooh, y'all, that's the good rookie show. <laughs> so, guys, as you know, it's the time to do our shout outs. We covered a lot. My gosh. So thank you for rocking with us. Um, I have a few shout outs, but I definitely want to big up uh, my biggest shout out. And for those who don't follow me on Instagram or Twitter, you, can, you can't be surprised. If you follow me, you know. If you don't, well, guess what? Coco! Beep! Coco, okay, a uh, U.S. Open champ, Fahim. I was at my friend's daughter's first birthday. Guess what I was doing at her first birthday? I had the U.S. Open on my phone, watching Coco on a Saturday. When that, listen, I was crying. I'm crying at a barbecue, y'all. People are like, "Are you okay?" And I'm like, "Coco won." They're like, "Okay, <laughs> okay." That was me, y'all, crying at a barbecue. Because Coco won. Fahim, two years ago, I saw this girl. Remember, we talked talk about her before. And I'm like, yo, this girl is going to be a star. And I've been following her ever since. I, I, I said, she's going to win it. She's going to win it. And now she's got her first Grand Slam title, U.S. Open. It is marked in the history books. The youngest since Serena, who won a 17, she won a 19, and team to win, Fahim. Coco, golf. Big up to her mom, her dad, her family very happy for that tribe they worked hard to get her there so that is my shout out you understand go ahead <laughs> nice that was a great shout out um i'm gonna pay back off for that shout out to coco golf uh, her dad was crying also and there was a nice little clip where she's saying after winning uh, i guess her dad was crying and she's saying you know uh, he has this kind of tough persona and it's the first time in her life she saw him cry mm -hmm. right so the fact that he talked about the road of getting there like she was uh, she said her parents took her there when she was young yeah uh, as a kid she watched uh, Venus and Serena play at the US Open to think how many years later uh, she's a champion in the same spot with her parents there that must have been such a like a powerful moment uh, for the family so shout out to Coco Goff I'll piggyback off your shout out 
awesome. Big up to you, Coco. Mm. <laughs> All right, Nelly J. Let's put this episode in the books. Y'all, that was the good rookie show. <laughs> so y'all, if you had a good time, you enjoyed yourself, please like and subscribe. And don't forget to tell, tell a friend. For he. On all platforms, if you're looking for us, you know what it is. It's a good rookie show. Then we out. Yeah. Yeah.